महाराज प्लीज एक्सेप्ट नाम मिले विशेष संस्कृत महाराज के लॉर्ड स्वीट ऑफ दिस टू का हाय कृष्णा मैंने यू वांट मी टू पुट वर्स ऑन द स्क्रीन और हम्म या शुड आई पुट द वर्स ऑन द स्क्रीन महाराज या या ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय महागदेशन Ranyaksa's temper was difficult to control. He had anklets of gold tingling about his feet. He was adorned with a gigantic garland, and he rested his huge mace on one of his shoulders. Verse twenty-two. Mm-hmm. Manoviryam varok siktam. Asrinyam akuto bayam bitanili bitanilil yire devas tarkshitas trasta eva eva havaya. Translation: His mental and bodily strength, as well as the boon conferred upon him, made him proud. He feared death at the hands of no one. and there was no checking him the gods therefore were seized with fear at his very sight and he hid themselves even as snakes hide themselves in fear of the ruda in very short purport the asuras are generally strongly built as described here and therefore their mental condition is very sound and their prowess is also extraordinary Haranyaksha and Haranyakasipu have received the boon that they would not be killed by any other living entities within the universe. Were almost immortal, and thus they were completely fearless. Om Gyan Timiranda Syan Gena Jana Salakaya. Chaksun Militam Yena Tas Mare Shri Guru Namaha. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Tasaya Bhutale. वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासदि गौर भक्त विंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरि 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 राम हरि राम 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 हम टू द गेट कीपर्स जय एंड विजय हैविंग अफेंडेड द फोर कुमारस वाज द immediate cause of their falling into the material world was demons the remote cause was krishna's desire to fight <laughs> prabhupad used to say well, where is that fighting propensity propensity that you have where does it come from it comes from krishna <laughs> we also find great uh 
exhilarations of happiness when we can fight. Of course, it's based on the modes of material energy, but still, it's there. So Krishna, he wanted to do exercise his prowess and fight because, as Prabhupada says, in the material, in the spiritual world, there's no question of fighting. Of course, the fighting that goes on with Krishna in the spiritual world is all play. And it's not enmity or envy, nor does anyone get hurt. It's completely on the spiritual platform. And it's done as a form of play or a, a way to serve Krishna in the spiritual world. But Krishna likes to come to the material world and fight. So who can he fight with? He can fight only with those who are inimical to him, envious of him, or actually try to destroy him or his devotees. So he takes up that fighting spirit. And for him, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Seeing these two personalities, their brothers, Ranyaksha and Ranyakashipu. Uh, if one performs austerity, one becomes powerful. Even in the material sense, one will become powerful through various types of austerity. So austerity means denying the body in so many different ways, denying the mind's desires. Uh, there's material austerities are generally fasting, giving up sleep, um, performing great charitable work for people in general at the expense of one's own self-interest. <clears throat> so these are kinds of mysterious austerities. So these two demons, especially Harani Kashi Prabhu, he performed severe austerities, those austerities cannot be even explained what to speak about, matched by anyone. Ranyaksha also. Ranyaksha, his program was to take as much gold from the earth as possible and use it for his own sense gratification. He had, as it says here, he had golden anklets Him. And he had gold, he had a crown which is made out of gold. He, he was decorated with gold in so many different ways. And he exploited the earth for gold. And then the earth lost its balance in the cosmic order and was forced to fall into the Govardhaksa ocean. That'll come up later in this series of discussions. So, who can stop him? Nobody could stop him. And he was thinking, you know, I'm invincible. But then again, they don't consider the actual source of their, because Krishna says, I am the source of everything. Not only the source of everything that exists, but also the qualities and characteristics that each and every living entity has is also coming from Krishna. And because Krishna puts the material energy into place, and if one works according to that material energy and knows how to manipulate it, like these demons do, they're expert at knowing how to manipulate the material energy to fulfill their desires. They become very powerful, very wealthy, very influential. <clears throat> and um, When it's done with such expertise as these, these two demons here, you know, they become invincible by any living entity. <clears throat> And what is that attitude? He becomes proud. He thinks, there's no one as great as me. There's no one that can cause me any harm. And so, of course, this is an illusion because we understand that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the all-powerful force in existence, just like when Rani Kasipu was 
harassing his little son, pure devotee, Prahlad Maharaj. And he could see Prahlad Maharaj had some power because he couldn't kill him in any way. And he was quite mortified by the fact that this young boy defied him and at the same time he could not do anything to him. And then at one point he said to Prahlad, where do you get your power from? And Prahlad responded, I get my power from the same place you get your power from, the same place that anyone has who has power gets it from, Vishnu. Of course, that made this demon, the demons are like snakes. So when you step on a snake, it's only going to agitate the snake even more. And the snake will be more vicious. So Harani Kashipu, he became very <laughs> angry. And that led up, of course, to her the Sringadev appearing from the column and killing him. So now we're hearing about Haranyaksha. Uh, and Prabhupada gives some indication. He says the uh, the mental prowess of the demons are very strong. Mm -hmm because they have strong bodily features. Um, if one is physically weak, it will also cause their mind to be uh, less able to control and direct. But the demons, because they focus on the material energy in order to extract the benefits of manipulating that material energy, and they become very, very powerful. Of course, Krishna says this material energy is my energy. It's very powerful. Very powerful. Tristi, Sisti, Palaya, Sadhyega, Chayeva, Chayeva, Vivati, Durga, Ichana, Rupa, Yasya, Apasay, Sate, Sa, Govinda, Mali, Purusha, and Tamaham, Bajami. But this material energy, is extremely powerful. So these demons, they learn how they learn how to control the material energy for their own sense gratification. Of course, that's only a temporary feature. No one can control the material energy beyond a certain point. But this is their whole program. And this is what goes on in the material world. Everyone thinks by adjusting the material energy, I'll, uh, I'll find satisfaction, I'll find happiness, I'll be able to fulfill my des desires. But this material energy is mutable, it's always changing, and one cannot control it because, as Krishna says, Maya Dakshina Prakriti Suyate such. This energy works under my control. But we might see here, temporarily, the demons have some influence. And they manipulate the material energy in order to control and to exploit. Their principle of control is the principle to exploit. And it's not something that is beneficial for anyone, but it's only about exploitation. But that same energy, when it's used by those in devotional service to serve the Lord, that same energy becomes daivi, daiviation, gunamayi, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, it's daivi. These three modes of material energy are daivi, they're spiritual, in the sense that when used in the service of the Lord, they elevate the practitioner to the platform of liberation or freedom from the effects of that, that material energy. But the demons, they see it in a different way. So you see, even today, now there's so many demons. The world is full of demons. In 1972, Srila Prabhupada gave a lecture. I recall listening to that lecture, and he said, the demons are only increasing, and they'll continue to increase. Uh, Prabhupada could understand how things were unfolding in the material way. 
And the demons were very, they weren't so powerful in 72, but right now they're very, very powerful in the sense that they are expert through technology how to control. <clears throat> they use technology as their, as their tool for control. And they're very expert at using that. And it's not the technology that we have. The demons have more advanced forms of technology. If you could understand what that advanced forms are, they're not available to the common people on the market. They're only available to the elite. It's very amazing technology, which can, you know, it looks like, you know, magic. And so the demons, they use technology to control everything, control people, control and the material energy like that. But Prabhupada said the demons are only increasing. And then he said, but don't worry, because Krishna has come. Kali Kale Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar. Krishna has come in the form of the holy name. So we see here that soon the Lord will appear as a boar from the nostrils of uh, Lord Brahma, and he'll grow into a gigantic form which will cover the whole sky. And then he will perform his pastimes of showing mercy to the demon by killing him. This is also an important part of, of Krishna's nature that he acts for the benefit of everyone. So the demons, they are causing problems to themselves and others, and they cannot be reasoned with. So Krishna arranges for them to be killed. Sometimes he kills them directly, and sometimes he uses the material energy to kill them. But in any way, he does that in order to uh, liberate them from their vicious nature and give them a chance uh, to uh, experience something higher, something better. That's Krishna. He's very, very kind. And so when Prabhupada was saying that, you know, the demons are only increasing, but Krishna has come in the form of his holy name, it's the avatar in this age. He said, simply by taking shelter of the holy name, they, the demons cannot do anything. And this is the power of our Krishna consciousness movement. And Sri Harinam Sankirtan is the transcendental power which uh, purifies the world, purifies anyone who takes part in it, and is the means for self-realization in this age. This chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is not simply an, a spiritual exercise. It is direct contact with the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his full manifestation as Krishna. As it says, uh, Nija Sarva Shakti, where Chaitanya makes this statement, Nija Sarva Shakti, that all the energy, all the all of the forms, all of the qualities, all of the pastimes, all of the names are found within the name of Krishna. Krishna is the sunam bonam of the Godhead. And in that, everything is there. So one who seriously and regularly, both, takes shelter of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra will be freed completely from the influence of Kali Yuga, as it says, Kaler Dosha Nidhi Rajana Asti Eko Mahagum, Kirtana Eva Krishna Sya Mukta Sangam Pralamba Jat. This verse is fundamental to understand what is the power of the holy name, that there are so many problems in Kali Yuga. And Prabhupada also says it's the demons that are causing all the problems. He said, Maya is our friend. Maya works for the devotees to help the devotees serve the Lord. But Maya is there and because she is the agent of the material energy and they are serving the material energy, she is forced to serve them also. And therefore the demons are very powerful. Uh, but Maya is simply the instrument 
of Krishna to fulfill the desires of the materialists. So when the demons learn how to, and they do, they're very expert, how to manipulate the material energy, Maya is facilitating that. If you read the uh, seventh canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, verse number eight of the first chapter, Krishna is equal, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is equal to everyone. You'll find that the Lord puts the material energy in place and it works according to his, his arrangement. And those who plug into the material energy, either in the mode of goodness, passion, or ignorance, uh, they get a particular activity and a result of that activity accordingly. So it also says that when people are, when the mode of passion is prominent in the world, the demons are in control. When the mode of ignorance is is um, prominent in the world. The mode of uh, the yakshas and rakshashas are in control. And when the mode of goodness is prominent, the devas, the demigods, are in control. So right now we can say the two lower modes are really prominent in the world because people are very sinful. They don't understand what sinful life is. And they go about illicit sex, intoxication, meeting, and gambling. These are the four pillars of sinful activities. Pillars means all sinful activities are found within these four. And as Prabhupada says, this is a way of life for modern civilization. The more you become expert at these things, the more you're seen as someone who is advanced. So that's the demon. So people either are influenced by the demons or are actually demons. There's only a this the demons are increasing, as Melbourne says, but people are influenced by the demons and don't really understand what is the real value of life and how to use the time that they have in this human form of life. So they waste time in sense gratification, which simply causes one to become more and more entangled in this network of suffering and enjoying back and forth. And ultimately, it leads to a birth in a lower species of life. So we see that there. <clears throat> and so Prabhupada said, you know, don't worry, take shelter of Krishna's holy name, just like Prahlad Maharaj was protected. Uh, Devaki, she was in the jail cell of Kamsa. She was protected. Um, and they were all under the threat of death, but because they had taken full shelter of Krishna, uh, they were protected by Krishna. <clears throat> and so um, the art of taking shelter of Krishna centers around chanting of the holy names of the Lord, which is the Sunam Bonum of spiritual practice in this age. It's so powerful, Krishna's name is so powerful that um, we don't really understand what we have. <laughs> it's very powerful. So one should never consider chanting the holy names as a botheration or simply as a duty. It is a great opportunity to purify oneself and go back home, back to Godhead and be free from all of the sufferings in this material world. So you might say, well, I'm chanting, but the question is how much time and energy are you putting into your chanting? How much priority do you give to your chanting? Do you make it the most important thing in your life or is it something somewhere on the lower level of your activities or somewhere in between? So this is the, this is, uh, Krishna is very kind. So he's given the formula, take shelter of me by chanting my holy name. Of course, we can take shelter in other ways too, such as hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, the Lord's pastimes. Now we can take shelter of Krishna by taking shelter of his pure devotees. These are all forms of complete shelter, but the holy name is the foundation by which all other shelters get their source to give protection. Everything is centered around the holy name. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's because of Lord Chaitanya's mercy. 
he's made that uh, prominent in today's age. That's why it says that there's a beautiful pastime where the different ages were discussing what is the best of all ages in Satya Yuga. There is uh, Treta Yuga, there's Lopura Yuga, and the Kali Yuga. And after the, this discussion, it was concluded that uh, Kali Yuga is the best of all ages, <laughs> at least this Kali Yuga. Why? Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come in this age with the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So he's the mercy manifestation in this age. So we should center our attention and life around glorifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his mission, and along with chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And then, then Krishna consciousness is so nice. And no matter how powerful or how influential the demons are, and they are very powerful. Actually, it's explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam that gradations of consciousness there's a nice verse maybe you can turn turn to that verse um, um what was it we have uh yes Maharaj. yes Maharaj. it's uh, um it's the fifth canto fifth chapter verse number 22 Five five twenty two, and it, it explains the gradations of consciousness, and you'll find something interesting as the as is as it's explained here. Yes, my just a moment. I found this quite revealing. Of course, it wasn't so. Well, I didn't get excited about it, but it was revealing anyway. <laughs> uh, five five. 22. Let's see. Yeah. I think, yeah, this is the verse. I think, yeah. Okay. Go down to the translation. Hmm. Of the two energies, spirit and dull matter, being possessing living forces, vegetables, grass, trees, and plants are superior to dull matter, stone, and earth. Superior to non-moving plants and vegetables are worms and snakes, which can move. Superior to worms and snakes are animals that have developed intelligence. Superior to animals are human beings, and superior to human beings are ghosts, because they have no material body. Superior to ghosts are the Gandharas, and superior to them are the Siddhas. Superior to the Siddhas are the Kinaras, and superior to them are the Asuras. You can see the asuras are, are superior even to many of the, uh, in consciousness that is, the power of consciousness. Superior to the asuras are the demigods, and the demigods, Indra, the kingdom, is superior. Superior to Indra are the direct sons of Brahma, like King Daksha, and the supreme among Brahma's sons is Lord Shiva. Since Lord Shiva is the son of Lord Brahma, Brahma is considered superior, but Brahman is also subordinate to me, the supreme personality of that it. Because I'm inclined to the Brahmanas, the Brahmanas are the best of all. So this is spoken by Rishabdev, the incarnation of the Lord. So you see, um, superior, superior means consciousness, the power of consciousness. So you can see the Asuras, there are planets where there are Asuras, and their consciousness is even developed higher than the Gandharvas, the Siddhas, the Kanaras. And of course, the human beings, the human being, that's why when Haranikashi Pu, or even Ravana, both of them, when they were <clears throat> accepting benedictions, uh, you know, Ravana said, don't even insult me by giving me a benediction to be free from human beings. They're so puny. <laughs> you know, he was, a, he was a very powerful Rakshasha. And uh, Rakshashas are the Asuras, actually. And they're superior. Uh, and so you'll see that uh, human beings are on a low, low level. Even the ghosts are more superior than human beings because they have no material bodies. So this is all understood in context to consciousness, in other words, the development of consciousness. But the human beings can become fully Krishna conscious, and that's the superiority. 
But in general, human beings are very quite puny on the level uh, in comparison to other forms of life. So we should never think humans are so advanced <laughs> unless you're Krishna consciousness, conscious. It's like that. So I thought I'd just bring this out just to give you a little understanding of and that, you know, many of the asuras are very powerful, more, much more powerful than the humans. And therefore, they're always controlling the humans. But no one can control the devotees because the devotees are under the care of Krishna. And so they are protected by Krishna. And they're also given intelligence by Krishna how to free themselves from false forms of control, such as demons. And that's very much prominent in today's society where, you know, the media run by the demons are, you know, trying to control everybody and everybody's becoming, or either believing the media or becoming fearful because of the media. And because uh, their demons are very expert at mind control. This is one of their uh, qualities. They know how to control people's minds. They use technology, but in years ago, they didn't use technology. They used uh, various types of mystic power and force to control. But all of these are inferior to devotees who take shelter of Krishna. So if we want to be free from the influence of the demoniac society, which is so strong today, we have to take shelter of Krishna and his holy name and chant regularly, chant with enthusiasm and always think how to chant more, how to chant better, how to bring more and more people into the chanting. This is the Sunam Bonam, this is the power in this age, is Krishna's holy name. Okay, so we'll uh, end here. Open it up to questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept yeah, our uh, obeisances. Go back to the gallery there. Take the uh, verse off. Yes, Maharaj. Go back to the gallery and we request all the devotees to, uh, to uh, turn on their cameras. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam Maharaj, all gurus to Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the wonderful class. Maharaj, uh, Raj Prabhu has a question. Raj Prabhu, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to yourself and all devotees present here. Raj, I actually have two questions, but I'll just ask one for now so that others can ask their questions also. Uh, we can, we can, it's easy to accept that the Lord uh, wanted to fight and he sent his two gatekeeper devotees down, had plenty of opportunities to have a fight with them and then sent them back. But I find it a bit more difficult to understand. Maybe you can explain. If we take one of the demons like Hiranyakashipu, they apparently committed so many atrocities against innocent people and brahmanas and children. And how can we understand that? Mm -hmm. Well, material energy is full of atrocities. <laughs> Whether it happens by Yorani Kashipu or somebody else, it'll happen. <laughs> what is destined to happen will happen. <laughs> so, you, yeah, well, you might say, yeah, but it's also an impetus to take greater shelter. 
we find that when things are too nice, just like there's a, we were just discussing the other day, one verse from, from the fifth canto, 19th chapter, verse number 28, that the demigods, when their time is running out in the higher planets, they want to come back to the, to this level of existence, the um, Borloka, the middle planetary systems, so they can take part in Lord Chaitanya's movement. There's too much opulence in the uh, higher realms, and therefore people become enamored by and distracted with those things. So a lot of times you'll see when things are difficult, when we have the example now, uh, due to this pandemic, epidemic, whatever you want to refer to it as, um, people have become more Krishna conscious. <laughs> Preaching has never been so good. <laughs> Books are going out like crazy. Programs are going on. Devotees are are preaching even more now. And it's been happening ever since. Uh, although we're using media and many of that, and many of the forms of preaching, still we're reaching thousands and thousands of people. So, uh, yeah. So when things get difficult, those who are intelligent, they become more and more inclined to take shelter of the Lord. And that's their, that's their success, that's their benefit. Okay, Mahamadaji, can you mute? Very much, Mahaj. But you can, I, I know what Prabhupada would say, this material world is what it is. There's, there's always problems. Whether it's caused by Harani Kashipu or somebody else, there's always going to be problems here. <laughs> it's like now we got a, a war going on. If that war stops, they'll start something somewhere else in the world. There's always this material world. It's, it's just the way it is. It's not a nice place. Enmity, envy, greed, lust, anger. These are the characteristics that permeate the lives of people in the material world. <laughs> it's just the way it is. The material world is what it is. It's Dukalyam Asastratam. It's miserable. <laughs> if, we don't, if we're not convinced it's miserable, well, we might not be experienced in misery because we're engaged in devotional service. That's Krishna's mercy. Stop your devotional service and see what happens. <laughs> I don't expect you to listen to that. That's not an instruction. But if you, as soon as you pull out of the devotional service, you know, the waves of material energy will hit you again <laughs> in a very strong way. We don't understand how much we're protected by Krishna. Sometimes we do. <clears throat> Thank yes. You, okay. Hare Krishna. Maharaj Sri Devi Mataji has a question. Sri Devi Mataji, please unmute yourself. Thank you, Prabhu. Please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to our Guru Parampara. All glories to the devotees. My humble obeisances to all. Guru Maharaj, this particular uh, verse, the translation says, that the demons have very strong bodies and therefore they have very strong minds also. Right. So my, my question is then, supposing we do not have such strong bodies, does that mean that we will also have weak minds? And if that's the case, uh, only through bhakti yoga can it be strengthened. Is that correct? Yeah. Because if your body is weak, it'll affect your mind also. And vice versa, if your mind is weak, it'll affect your body. Yeah, but that's material. 
But for devotees, they're fixed, their consciousness is developed through chanting, serving, worshiping. So their minds are strong. So the hum a devotee is humble, but that humility doesn't take away from the fact that they have clear vision. Their vision is clear. It's not clouded by the three modes of material energy. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. So when we say that the demons have strong minds, we're talking about their tendency, their capacity for controlling, manipulating material nature. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's nothing about, you know, when Prabhupada talks about talks about um, uh, Stalin, the, the very powerful Russian leader. He had to undergo an operation. Prabhupada said in the intestines. So they wanted to give him an anesthesia. He said, "No, I want to watch the operation." And so he watched the operation as they were cutting him open. Prabhupada said, this is because he's fixed and uh, propagating the communist principles, his mind is strong. So we're fixed in Krishna consciousness. Our minds are very strong. Well, Stalin is a good example. Prabhupada makes that point, yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for the clarification. My humble obeisances. But don't try to become a demon so you can have a strong material mind. <laughs> have a strong, no, spirit, strong spiritual mind. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. I was thinking about my weak mind and I was thinking how much work there is to do to strengthen it in Krishna consciousness. Uh, the, weakness, the weakness of the mind is due to sense gratification. The more you engage in sense gratification, the more your mind becomes weak. Hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for the reminder. Thank you, Maharaj. Sham Kishor Prabhu, you may proceed with your question. <coughs> Please accept my humble obeisances in the dust of your lotus feet. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. It's such an amazing fortune to hear from you every time. I, and I hear from you, I feel my heart enlivened and I feel so blissful. So, uh, Maharaj, when you mentioned about taking shelter of the Lord, so there are different prayers like mention and nectar of devotion, Dainya, Vodhika, Samparat, Tanatmika, and Lalasa Mai, like three types of prayers Prabhupada says. So in one of the prayers, Prabhupada says uh, that one should cry to uh, become engaged in a particular service of the Lord. And then Prabhupada... Lala Samai, that's Lala Samai, yeah. And then Srila Prabhupada says that uh, such tears are the price for the highest perfection. So yeah. um, I know I'm not qualified to pray uh, like that, but uh, like should I should I pray? I mean, it's um, because if I'm not qualified, if I pray for something which I'm not qualified, then will the Lord respond? Well, your qualification can also be influenced by the fact that when you actually realize your situation, here we are in the material world. Death can happen at any moment. It's like I got a I got a text message from someone today who I know. And uh, their son-in-law is came down with terminal cancer. <clears throat> so he's not so old. <clears throat> At any moment, anything could happen. We don't even know what's going on in our bodies. Uh, yeah. So this material world is a dangerous place. <laughs> so these are these are impetuses in the form of understanding that yeah, I have to take shelter of Krishna in a very what we say, complete way. So calling out to Krishna, and Alala Samayi can be imitated. That's a little bit, uh, that's really high. 
And that's for those who are fixed on the platform of bhava. So they're praying like that and they're offering tears of uh, devotion to the Lord. But we can understand, at least practically, that we're in a dangerous situation here, being in the material world and having a material body. Here, the material body is so um, vulnerable to whatever happens in the material world. You know, a little mosquito can come along and pretty soon you got malaria. <laughs> so we don't really know how this... Well, if you do a little exercise and just sit there with a pencil and paper and write down all the ways you can find happiness in the material world and all the ways you can suffer, I'm, I guarantee that the suffering list will way outdo the happiness list. <laughs> so if we're, not, if we're not aware that this material world is such a dangerous place, padam padam ya bi padam, yeah, it's mentioned in the scriptures, danger at every step. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati said, no place for a gentleman. No place for a gentle lady. It's not a, we don't belong in this place. It's full of danger and it's temporary. <laughs> but because we get a little bit of happiness, there's that story where a man falls in the well and he's falling and he, as he's falling, he grabs onto a branch that's there in the well. And now when he looks down into the well, he sees a snake on the very bottom. And then when he looks up, he sees a tiger on the very top. So he can't go up and he can't go down. And then he's holding onto the branch. And then there's two rats who are chewing onto the branch. One is a white rat and one is a black rat. These are the days and nights. So there he is hanging, but there is a, there is a uh, nest of bees in the well also. And there's some honey dropping from the... Uh, nest and it's falling right on his tongue so he's thinking oh it's not so bad i'm getting a little honey so death is waiting for him both above below and inevitably soon and he gets a little drop of honey and he's thinking this is nice <laughs> that's our situation in the material world <laughs> We get a little bit of honey and we think, oh, it's not a bad place. <laughs> but the honey will run out. And even that is not the, the reason for happiness. So Krishna arranges this material world so no one can stay here and no one can be happy here. And that's his mercy. He does that just to give us an impetus to go back home, back to God. Now, if you're not suffering, you think, well, yeah, that's for everybody else, but I'm okay. <laughs> but then again, give yourself a little time and you'll see things change. <laughs> and some time, Things will change. <clears throat> I mean, there's so many stories that illustrate this illusion of happiness, and then all of a sudden the illusion is no longer there anymore, and the reality comes to face to face. This is the material world, dangerous place. We're not meant to be here. We can we can just walk along the the ground and we can break our toe. We're not watching where we're going. We bang our toe on a step and pretty soon we got a broken toe. Such pain. <laughs> it's just the way this material world is. The bodies are so vulnerable to pain. And the material energy is so mutable. It's always changing. Prabhupada was walking with the devotees in Denver, Colorado. They were walking through this nice park. And Prabhupada just stopped. He said, any minute, this whole place could be on fire. And then everything changes. 
until you speak to that about to the devoted the people who are in the Ukraine. You know, if you go back a couple months, everything maybe everything was different. Now it's a whole different thing. And you might say, well, I'm living in London, I'm living in the United States, can't happen here. <laughs> <laughs> wherever the material energy is it will happen so we should be aware that we can we can make these prayers Lala Samayi I would say that's a little elevated I mean that's really elevated that's when you get to the platform of Bhava when you're really feeling Intense separation from Krishna in love, then those prayers of Lala Samayi. But yeah, but just in general, we should be thinking of praying to Krishna, please don't let me fall into Maya. Please engage me in your devotional service. Maharaj, um, sorry, can I ask a follow up? I I, I will try to study the perils of this material existence and I will try to apply what you said. Can I ask a little follow-up? Uh, yeah, I guess. It's Kadamba Kanana, he's in charge. So, uh, so uh, like at my stage, I am full of anarthas and I'm very fallen. So how can I cultivate this, uh, increase my greed to serve Krishna more and more. Well, um, Bhakti Manota Kaur explains that by increasing the quality of your chanting, you can overcome many of the obstacles that you are faced with. He talks about attentive chanting as being the focus of a serious devotee in the practice of devotional service. He says, here's where you place your attention. Try to increase the quality of your chanting by becoming more attentive, more devotional. The chanting of the holy name is not just an activity we perform, it's something we actually cultivate, the quality of those chant that chanting. So yeah, there's one. The second thing is think how to uh, offer service to the Vaishnavas. Make plans to serve the Vaishnavas. Sometimes we think, well, if I get the opportunity, I'll serve the devotees. But that's not our philosophy. Our philosophy is that we should be proactive in thinking how to serve. And that will inspire our Krishna consciousness even more. And of course, uh, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord purifies the heart and awakens our attraction for Krishna. So these three things, uh, quality chanting, hearing and chanting more the glories of the Lord and serving Vaishnavas. If you put your focus on these three, you'll... Uh, on the transcendental platform. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. We are very grateful for your association and the wonderful class, Maharaj. It appears that these are the questions we have for today. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. My obeisance is to you and to all the devotees and to uh, Yugala Kishore for organizing this nice program for the devotees. His Holiness Chandra Mauli Swami Maharaj Ki yeah. 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 Yeah.